Yesterday, the Detroit Lions found out news that one of their players was not going to be coming back for another season. The question now is, is how do the Lions handle this news and what do they do moving forward? We're going to talk about it in this episode today, folks, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes, I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with with, with the big dogs. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello Lions fans, and welcome back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and as always, we're diving in. So, here's the thing, folks. Again, not going to beat around the bush, not going off a script. Again, much like I did with my other episode today, I'm just talking to y'all guys. I'm just sitting here in my chair and just having a conversation with y'all. I'm giving you guys the unvarnished, I'm giving you guys the complete 100% truth and thoughts of David Pike here when it comes to this topic, like I did with my last video. So, here's the thing, folks. Yesterday, we found out that the Lions wide receiver that, you know, Brad Holmes, that Dan Campbell had stated that they wanted to come back, that they were interested in coming back, is not going to be coming back, and that's Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds yesterday was reported by Adam Schefter is signing a two-year, $14 million deal that is of max value, supposedly, with the Denver Broncos. Now, when I heard this news, the news itself really didn't surprise me. It wasn't news that really sent, again, shockwaves through the entirety of my core or through, I would think, most of the Lions community. It's kind of like, hey, you know what? It is what it is. I will say this, though. I am going to miss Josh Reynolds from the fact that for the majority of the time that Josh Reynolds has been a member of the Detroit Lions, he has been a reliable target, he has been a reliable wide receiver, and he has been a good wide receiver. Now, I know that for... Some Lions fans, losing Josh Reynolds is not exactly something that they're going to cry about. They're not exactly going to be all too broke up about because of what happened in the conference championship game. And for them, they're going to see that Josh Reynolds not coming back is going to have some connection with that. And that, to me, I think is just being short-sighted. That, to me, I think is just being ridiculous. Because, like I said, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell both stated very, very plainly they wanted to bring Josh Reynolds back. So obviously his performance, or lack thereof in some spots, in the championship game had very little to do with any of that. Because again, Josh Reynolds wasn't the only wide receiver who dropped passes, but his were the ones that definitely stuck out. But I think what Josh Reynolds non-resigning with the Detroit Lions, the best way I can phrase it right now, means is kind of more or less another Jamal Williams kind of thing. Because we have to understand something here. When the Lions had to go out and try and get Jamal Williams back last year and then they wound up signing David Montgomery, again, we found out that the Lions were in contract talks. They were trying to bring Williams back. But realistically, what wound up happening is Jamal Williams wanted a better deal or what he thought was a better deal to go and play for the New Orleans Saints, which we found out that that move did not really benefit Jamal Williams at all because literally he went almost the entire season without having any sort of meaningful production. It literally took the last play of the season for the Saints for him to get his only touchdown with the Saints as a running back. So that right there tells me that Jamal Williams going to the Saints was an absolutely stupid move on his part. Now, I will say this. Was it all about the money? Probably, at least for that part. But the thing that is kind of odd, a little bit interesting about the whole situation with Josh Reynolds is that he went to the freaking Denver Broncos, which the Broncos, let's understand something here. They've already got a pretty good wide receiver core of their own selves because they've got what? They've got they've got at least three different wide receivers that I know that are more, incapable, more than capable of handling their own. So for me, I find it kind of odd that... Josh Reynolds would leave the Detroit Lions to then go to the Denver Broncos. Because the reason why this is kind of odd for me is that Josh Reynolds has primarily played with only one quarterback in his entire career. And that was Jared Goff. He played with Jared Goff when he was with the Rams. He played with Jared Goff when he came to the Lions. And here's the thing. 
when he left Jared Goff and the Rams and went to go play with the Titans, it did not work very well for Josh Reynolds and the Titans because Josh Reynolds thought that he was ready to take that next step to become the primary option guy for the Titans, and the Titans pretty much were like, no, we don't really think so. We're not really all that interested. The reason why I know this is because, if I recall correctly, around the same time that the Titans had gone out and gotten Josh Reynolds, that was around the same time they also went out and they acquired DeAndre Hopkins. So it's like, okay here, clearly that was not a good move on the Titans' part or Josh Reynolds' part because he didn't really do anything with the Titans. Hence the reason why he got released, he got waived, and then the Lions picked him up on the waiver wire. And then as soon as Josh Reynolds and Jared Goff come back together, hey, Josh Reynolds all of a sudden looks good again. He looks like a pretty decent wide receiver option. Now why am I saying this is not going to work well for Josh Reynolds and the Denver Broncos? Um, To put it quite plainly, we don't know who the Denver Broncos are going to have at quarterback yet. It's most likely going to be one of the top rookie options in this year's draft. But again, if there's one thing I know about rookie quarterbacks is that it doesn't necessarily always work out. Rookie quarterbacks are a very, very mixed bag. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're absolutely atrocious. So it's like, I don't know what the hell Josh Reynolds is thinking when he's going to start, go, you know, go to Denver. And I don't know what's going to happen there. But you know what? Best of luck to Josh Reynolds. Thank you for all the things you did here in Detroit. Now I want to focus on what's going to happen for the Lions here because the Lions are, again, kind of in an interesting position when it comes to this wide receiver core because they clearly have their number two. They clearly have the number one and the number two option. That's Amon Ross St. Brown and Jamison Williams. We've already heard Dan Campbell say that Jamison Williams is going to be playing the number two role this year as the wide receiver for the as a wide receiver for the Detroit Lions. So it's like, okay, Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver one, Jamison Williams, wide receiver number two. But now comes the question of, okay, who's going to play wide receiver number three? Because that would have inevitably been Josh Reynolds' role should he have come back. So the Lions now literally have three options to go with that role. And the three options are this. They could, in theory, decide to stay with what they have on the roster and go with Donovan Peoples-Jones. Donovan Peoples-Jones is considered a talented wide receiver. Donovan Peoples-Jones was traded from, if I recall correctly, the Browns by the Lions this last year. And he didn't necessarily get a whole lot of action this year because of the fact that Josh Reynolds was here and a bunch of other guys were kind of already ahead of him. But it's like, hey, we know that John Donovan Peoples-Jones, he's talented. We know that he can play. So maybe the Lions might decide to say, hey, you know what? We, we already have this guy. Let's see what he can do. Maybe he can fill the role that's left void by Josh Reynolds' depart departure. That's one possibility. The other possibility is that the Lions could go out and they could make a free agent acquisition of a veteran wide receiver. I know that one guy that a lot of Lions fans have talked about is the potential of bringing back DJ Chark because DJ Chark is out on the free agency market. He's familiar with Ben Johnson's offense. He's familiar with Jared Goff. They already have a chemistry. They already have a rapport that's been built up. It would seem like, hey, if you're just trying to find a rental, you're just trying to find a one-year guy that can kind of come in and fill that void fill that gap, you could potentially go out and get DJ Chark. We know the guy is a very talented dude as far as a wide receiver is concerned. However, though, the problem is his, ab his availability, his durability, because when he even was here with the Lions, he was not always available for us to play. So it's like that is a bit of a problem because it's like one of the things that our offense has to have is playmakers be consistently available. So that's a bit of an issue for me. And then the third option, which I think is the most likely option, is I think the Lions are probably going to maintain what they currently have on the roster, keeping Donovan Peoples-Jones, Khalif Raymond, and the rest of the crew. But I believe the Lions are going to go into the draft this year, and I believe they are going to draft a wide receiver. Again, I have talked about multiple, multiple wide receivers as far as draft profiles, as far as draft prospects, because I truly believe to my core the Lions are going to draft one. And I think it just makes too much sense at this point because it's like, hey, you lost Josh Reynolds. Josh Reynolds was a very, very key pivotal player for the Lions offense. I wouldn't say like, you know, he was a star, but he had a very significant role for us. So it's like, okay, you've got to find somebody to fill that role. Do you really want to trust Donovan Peoples-Jones? You could... But if we know one thing about the Lions, again, the Lions like to have competition. They want to have the best man win. They want to make sure that, you know, you have to earn the job. So it's like, okay, 
Let's keep Donovan Peoples-Jones, but let's bring in some competition for him. Let's bring in a guy that is a rookie who's going to be hungry, he's going to want to play, he's going to want to prove himself. And again, we know the Lions are interested in wide receivers because they met with a couple of guys at the draft combine. So it's like, okay, they met at the Combine, there's those guys. And I've talked about at least one of them in Devontae Walker. But I know there's another guy that a lot of Lions fans like, and that's Xavier Leggett. He's a guy that's definitely popping up on a lot of people's radars when it comes to the Detroit Lions. But there's other guys that I've mentioned as well. There's Jerry Rice's son, Brendan Rice. I've talked about him in a previous episode. There's also Luke McCaffrey, who's a brother to Christian McCaffrey and the son of Ed McCaffrey. He's also in this year's draft. So the Lions have a lot of author. They have a plethora, a bevy of options when it comes to potentially trying to find a replacement for Josh Reynolds or to plug yet another piece, another weapon into this very potent, very deadly offense. The real question is, what will they do? How will they handle it? What's their next step? And that's what is really intriguing because it's like, hey, the Lions can literally go any of one of direct any of one of a couple of directions here. The real question is which one do they choose? And that's what makes this intriguing is because we simply just don't know. But each one has a definitely what I would call a tantalizing prospect. Each one has a very interesting, okay, this could be how this goes, this could be how that goes. We just don't know. But those are all the ways that I could see the Lions potentially rectifying the situation. But having said that, I think I'm going to end the episode here. I've talked my piece. I've said what I thought on the matter. So I'm just going to say thank you all for watching yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage all to watch the next episode. I also encourage all to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past and forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you've not had a chance to do so, again, please subscribe. It really helps me out, and I'm thankful for every subscription that I can get my hands on. But also, after you subscribe, make sure you turn on that bell notification icon as well, so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up, but we want to make sure you guys turn on the notification icon, so that way as soon as I push something out, you guys can come right on back in. But I also want to encourage y'all, please, share this content with your Lions friends and family members. Share here on YouTube. Share it on Twitter. Share it on Facebook. Share anywhere and everywhere you can with everybody and anybody that you can. The more we can share it, the greater the channel grows, the greater the channel spreads. And with that being said to everybody, again, I just want to say you guys are an amazing community. You guys are an amazing set of fans, and I'm thankful for every single one of y'all. I also want to say, I hope you all have something today that makes you happy. I hope you all have something today that makes you smile. I hope you all enjoyed the content. And with that, God bless. And until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.